Hello, welcome back. Let me introduce in this video the first uh, advanced uh, optimization, practical, practical optimization case using the code I open for. So this is a blonde body shape optimization. And this is kind of a textbook example because we manufacture this solution. Now we force, we formulate our problem and we force this solution to get to a very specific shape. Okay, but let me explain a little bit what we're going to do. So basically we have this shape and we have four control points. And by modifying the four, four control points, we're using Bezier curve. We're going to change it, okay? And we, we, we want to, to, to reduce this drag, okay? So coming back now to that slide that I mentioned, never, never forget to formulate your problem. So if I formulate my problem as simple as that, basically the best shape to get the minimum drag will be, this will disappear. All these points will be in the center, it will disappear. But we know that that is, or probably is a feasible solution, but in our case, we want to have kind of an airfall. So this is why we need to formulate the problem at constraints. So in this case, we had a few constraints to arrive to a very specific geometry. Okay, so basically what we have, geometry, the geometry is going to be generated using Salome. Okay, Salome is a, it used to be not so good. Now it's a little bit better. And honestly, it's getting better and better with time. And I, right now I'm starting con to consider Salome as a good tool to put it you now in, in complex uh, optimization loops, it can do the geometry meshing. So it's getting much better. And the most important, uh, the, 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 the most important was that it used to have some problems that very often it was crashing because it was using TCP ports and stuff like that. And sometimes those ports were busy and it was crashing. So you needed to restart, you know, that you have that capability in that code. But it was a little bit annoying. But last, the latest test that I have been doing with a lot of uh, simulations, uh, function evaluation, it hasn't crashed yet. And I have done 10,000 function evaluations. So also it's up to you to test it. But I think it's getting better. So it is a uh, good content and for to put you know, in, in our optimization loop and substitute whatever and use it. So this is what we have. We're going to use this simple problem at least to the to test many methods. So we're going to use gradient based, design space exploration, SBO and adjoint. Okay. So this is how the loop works. So the code is going to orchestrate everything. Then we connect to Salome, the geometry model, then we pass to Salome again for the mesh model, we export the mesh, we go to open fun, and then a lot of past processing involves to convert everything. So as you see, it's quite simple. Okay. And the stuff can get, by the way, very complex. You can connect just all these tools and you can put it in parallel and so on. So we're just adding a little bit now complexity level. So basically what we're going to have the optimal solution as the problem is formulated, it is this one. So it starts from this, remember four control points. We have a few nonlinear constraints and so well, the nonlinear constraint, we use it to force the shape to get this one. Now we are going to eliminate, but later I'm going to show you how to add nonlinear constraints and also to clarify what are, what are those nonlinear constraints for those who doesn't know. Okay. So we have this one and we should get to this one. And the beauty of this one that also we can switch easily to a multi-objective optimization problem here because we can reduce this drag, but also we can include increase the lift. And look at that. Optimization is very subjective. Problem formulation is important. Analyzing the data because yes, this one will be the one that is going to give you the minimum drag. But if I want to produce more lift, this one will be the optimal one. Okay. So look at how we push this problem to get to this one and we can experiment with different designs. So we're going to change for minimum drag, probably to maximizing LD and adding some constraint. Ideally, yeah, to add more LD will add more curvature, but we have a very well constrained. So remember, formulate the problem. So using, in this case, using a, a gridding based method, no, in particular, the method feasible directions, it's a classical method. We arrive to the optimal shape in 15 iterations, quite fast, okay? And instead, later I'm going to show you, we use an adjoint method that tends to be you now that state-of-the-art method. It will take much, much longer, very difficult to control. Okay, so here we're going to use the gradient method based in forward differences, 
okay? And but it's quite fast, if 150, by the way, we're not putting turbulence mold in anything. It's a quite quartz mesh, but just to get an idea how to do. But also we're going to do, use design space exploration. Remember, design space exploration is a kind of diverging method. You are not converging to the ideal. You are just exploring your design space to extract some knowledge that later you can use for something else namely surrogate based optimization or machine learning. So basically we design experiments of so design variables and see that we're sampling our design space. And look at that now we have four design variables. We're not looking anymore at that 2D plot. Now we just do this plot now to, 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 to look at uh, oh, uh, all the combinations of design variables and how we're sampled. So we can do many samples here so in this case we're going to use the old, uh latin to use latin hypercube sampling with 600 sampling but you can put whatever you want there the more the better use it but then you have you know, that constraint computing computational power and so on so this problem up with this numbers variable converts relatively fast okay and using 10 concurrent simulations you have more compute is you have 600 cores imagine that in one iteration you can have everything so it will be much faster than this one and you are going to get more information likely also you're going to get your ideal value so look at that computation and knowing your hardware formulating your problem both are very important so talking about the knowledge that you can extract so look at that here you have the same variables but here you have the response of each of the quantity of interest so here we're measuring many things so you can see that for instance some of these quantities have no correlation so probably in your design process you can eliminate it because it doesn't have any influence but look at this one x4 it have a strong influence okay even a, a quadratic influence so you cannot exclude that and also as i say this is giving you a lot of information you can see which one have a stronger impact you can also identify outliers and so on and here you have your responses also you can get the combination of responses with quantity of interest and so on all your correlations here you have correlation matrix okay so here in this correlation matrix you can see you know how how well they correlate or uncorrelate and so on. Okay, so this is part of this uh, exploratory data analysis, big data used to be called like that. Also statistical learning right now is machine learning AI. In any case, they're all synonyms. Okay, then we, you, we can construct models. Models is just, in this case, we're using regression models to predict sense so we can build very good predictors but this is just based on the quantity of interest coming back to all this stuff that I use in image recognition stable diffusion diffusion methods large large language models and so on because also you can reconstruct your solution okay it is a meta model of the data so now that you can imagine these are singular points but now you have a 3d case you need to take like a thousand uh uh, cut planes and then those cut planes you can reconstruct it from solution to solution and that is super expensive but it can be done but i want to know if we can do you know i'm trying to disrupt myself and trying to see if this stable diffusion can be used so you need to to to, to train the model so and training that model that i have the data so far and getting something but by the way also basically i'm doing that to get initial conditions, not to get solutions, okay? That is really bad that you use all this stuff to get solutions. So there is a lot of people that criticize uh, turbulence models, but they want to use machine learning, which is even worse than all the uncertainty that you can put in those turbulence models. Any case, sorry for that digression. So now we go here, also you can identify outliers, and this is very important because sometimes this is important information. You want to know what is that specific outlier that will deviate your solution that it will give you problems. So using different techniques you now, exploratory data analysis and so on. This is a box plot. I love it. You can easily identify outliers, get all the statistics and so on. And then construct your model, okay, using that data. So you can use polynomial regression, you no know, splines, neural networks, radial basis functions and then Cree interpolation, which is my favorite one. Then also my favorite one would be uh, gradient boosting using XGBoost. And I would like to make a difference here later also, we're going to address that. Usually I recall a while ago when machine learning wasn't that advanced, I was relying a lot in Cree and Gaussian processes. And I was using that 
trying to reconstruct my field solution, which it wasn't very efficient because this method, and you will see here that you have a big matrix in, in version here. This is super slow. So imagine that you put there a mesh and even a small mesh, something like a thousand cells, which is small, this will take forever. So this method is not very efficient and usually it works very well for a small data set. So stuff like less than a hundred variables will work well. So this was where, where I was stuck with for a really long time. Okay, I recall even investing in a, in a Tesla car, uh, NVIDIA car. And today machine learning can do that. And this is where XGBoost is super efficient. Okay, I think it's, it's unbeatable. You can do this. But XGBoost or those machine learning techniques, they work very well when you have a lot of data. But if you don't have enough data, they are really bad. So this is the trade-off. So if you have a small data sets, uh, these techniques, all these techniques, they work very well. When you have large data sets, it's better to use machine learning. If that data set is, is expensive, well, you need to wait for a lot. Okay. Any case, then we can do multi, multi, multi objective optimization. We're going to show you to show you, to show you that. And remember the goal in multi objective optimization is to construct what we call a Pareto front. And this Pareto front will represent you know, the, the set of best solutions. So here you don't have a single solution. You can have a combination of many solutions. So for instance, you want to minimize drag and maximize lift and it's clearly that is not a single solution. You have different combination and it will be up to you to pick up the best one or probably you can cross relate that one to another variable like volume or whatever you want. Okay. Important concept also that this multi objective also will generate a lot of data, but also you can use gradient based methods, whatever, never use that data to construct model. But why? because that data it is biased data. It's biased towards whatever you are doing. And here you can clearly see that. So this is the data that I'm using now for a multi-objective case. I am analyzing this data. And if I use this one to construct models, so that it will be a really bad model because you have biased data. So avoid biased data when you're constructing models. And now finally with a joint optimization, and just want to go here that and towards same case is very tricky. Okay. And this is the, uh, the last method that I want to show you because it requires user experience. So it's better to get familiar with the previous methods and then here. So one thing also, when you do optimization, it doesn't matter what type you use. It can be grading, derivative free or adjoint. Try to avoid to do optimization using on steady solutions. Look at, at the steady field. Always compute your statistics. Why? Because if you have an on a steady solution, every single snapshot will have a different solution. So you don't have a single one. So that's why we look at, uh, at that steady solution. And usually in engineering, when we're doing design, we look at steady solutions. Okay. We don't look at the whole on the steady stuff because otherwise you become crazy. Any case, when you do this, uh, the adjoint, okay. Uh, you need to define many things. So in this case, we define a control box that is going to deform the geometry. And then the output of this adjoint is going to give you kind of a vector field, you now the design velocity, which is going to tell you how you need to change your geometry. So this can be done manually by the user or usually the solver will do that automatically. It's just to show you here how it's working in this case. And again, very bad you doing this stuff in on a steady case, but it works. So look at that. I start in one and then in 15, you get this one. And I put 15 because recall that the gradient method gets the solution in 15 iterations. This one see that while you might write in literature that this is the best solution, the best method, look at that in such a simple case is failing. And usually it's a method that you use, as I mentioned, to fine tune your solution. You arrive to that optimal solution and then fine tune that solution. It will find that it's small percentage that let's say in, a, in, in, in aerospace can make a big difference, a 1% drug reduction, a big di difference in, in, in fuel consumption. In any case, this is what you get after 15 iterations. And this is how it looks like. Look at also that this method will generate a strange shape. So here we're completely outside of the parametrization that we did in Salome. Instead, when we're using grading, we still have that those basic curve, everything. Here, we're outside of that. So the method will start to create a strange shapes. By the way, don't be afraid when the adjoint gives you a strange shape because they are good shapes. They're a good solution, but use it from the practical point of view. 
they are not valid. So it's up to you to judge that, but it happened very often. And see here that you have some artifacts in this solution. See here that you have some noise there in the surface that better we see here. And this is due to the method, how the deformation is done. So here you will need to stop this mesh deformation and reduce things manually. Okay. So something that seems to be the best method in reality for this simple case is not the best. There is a lot human intervention to, to avoid errors. And just here to summarize that in the, the grading based method to get to these shapes takes 15 iterations here. Look at that with the adjoint in 15 iterations were really far. And to get to the solution, we need to do more than 60 iterations. And there is a lot user interf intervention. We need to stop it like at 10 iterations. You need to do reverse engineering to, to extract this shape redo the mesh, smooth everything until you get to this perfect shape, which by the way, we don't get the perfect shape here. I'm just showing you the ideal one, but the one that we get after 60 is quite similar, but it's not the perfect. So be careful. Now think about the method that you need to use. Not always the adjoint is the best one and how I proceed. Always design a space exploration. Then we use grading. And if there is room for improvement, use the act joint. Okay. So that's all for this. And now we're going to get our hands dirty using this case. And I hope you, you enjoy the case and, uh, and you start to play with more advanced concepts in the sense, how to create, you know, that, that optimization loop and couple more tools. So I'll see you next video. Bye.